this report from Deborah Farrick, we should warn you, what you're about to hear could be disturbing. The first call came in from the school secretary moments after classes started. It gives an insight into how quickly the shooter, Adam Lanza, was able to get into the secured building. Pick out 911. What's the location of the emergency? Sandy Hook School. I think there's somebody shooting in here. Sandy Hook School. Okay, what makes you think that? Because somebody's got a gun. I saw a glimpse of somebody. They're running down the hallway. Okay. Well, they're still running. They're still shooting. All right. Sandy Hook School, please. Seven 911 calls were released. They captured the fear and quiet urgency and lack of panic of those inside and at the police dispatch. One woman shot in the foot crawled into a classroom where several children hid near a bookcase. Okay. Are you safe right now? Uh, I think so. My classroom door is not locked. Okay. Is there anybody that can lock the classroom door without being safe? No. It's safe to do so. Okay. No. All right. Just try to stay where you are. Okay. Is there I have anyone absolutely yes. There's children in this room. So. Okay. Try to apply pressure, okay? Yeah. Okay. We have people coming, okay? Uh-huh. All right. Mm. Is there any other teacher with you in there, or is it just students? Uh, no, there's two other adults in the room with me. Okay. All right. Are they are they right next to you? Or where are they in the room? No, they're they're over on the other side of the bookshelf. Okay. All right. Are you okay right now? Uh, for now, hopefully. According to a report by the state's attorney, that teacher and the students in the classroom survived. It was custodian Rick Thorne in a different part of the school who became the eyes and ears for a police dispatcher. I'm down the corridor. I'm All right, I want you to take cover. Jen, get the sergeant. All right, get everybody you can going down there. All right, let me, let me get some information from you. What makes you think that? The front glass was all shot out there. It kept, kept going on. Okay. It's still happening. All right. What about the students in the front of the building? Dude, dude, everything's locked up as far as I know. I'm not in the front. All right. You're in lockdown? Do you... Yeah, they're in lockdown. I keep hearing shooting. I keep, okay. keep hearing popping. At one point, the custodian, still on the phone with the dispatcher, is confronted by responding police officers. After he urgently identifies himself, he relays information between those officers and the 911 dispatcher. I'm on the phone with dispatch. The victims in the building. How many? How many? On scene, Newtown police officers quickly understand the scope of the tragedy. For the state police, okay? Our state police have been notified. They've been notified. And what becomes clear from listening to the tapes and exactly how they played out is that uh, there was a certain calmness. There was a lot of urgency. Yes, there was a there was a fear, a little bit of panic. But for the most part, everybody did what they needed to do uh, to try to get where they needed so they could save as many people in that building. Uh, that is very clear from listening to these tapes. Jake? Deb, these are just a portion of the 911 calls that were released today because of the uh, Freedom of Information Act that they have in Connecticut. There are other calls as well uh, that we do not have, right? We don't have those. The ones that were made to the Connecticut State Police, those have not been released. Those are in the custody of that police department. Uh, it's not clear whether, in fact, those calls will ever be released. But right now, these were the ones that were the focus of the Freedom of Information Act, and those were the ones that were released, a total of seven, for about 25 minutes. And you can hear as everybody's trying to get on the same page to make sure that the people in that school got the help they needed, Jake.